We'll start with uh, Mr. Dan here, and he's going to talk to us about ZimJS. Uh, we're going to do a live coding session and see what um, Zim is all about. And uh, so, welcome, Dan. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm inventor Dan Zen, and we're going to do some live coding on the canvas. Now, the canvas is an HTML5 tag, and we've got, we're bringing in CreateJS right here. CreateJS gives us the ability to organize on the canvas in a hierarchy. Much like you've got on the traditional development side, you've got a document object model, the DOM. Well, on the canvas, we work with a bitmap. It's a live bitmap in a sense, so we've got a bitmap object model. The bomb. Ooh. So we worked on the bomb. CreateJS gives us that and events. This is Zim, so we're bringing in Zim as well. That provides a bunch of conveniences, components, and controls on the canvas. And we'll be seeing some of those. Zim's a framework. Here's the frame. And we are using a fit mode right now, which will make uh, these dimensions, a canvas of these dimensions, fit within the browser window. If you want to go mobile, you probably want a full mode, and that would make all use of your, your screen there, but you would then have to do scaling yourself inside, using things like the Zim Layout class, which does responsive design and scale to these other things we use. So we're making a new frame. CreateJS gives us an on method that's much like the add event listener in traditional JavaScript. Well, this is JavaScript, just extra stuff. So the on method uh, is shorter than add event listener, that's nice, and it has a couple extra goodies. So we're saying, hey, when the frame is ready, when it's made that canvas, we're going to call this function and do all this stuff here. We are zogging, and that's a short form. Speaking of short forms, that's a short form for console.log. So instead of console.log all the time, we log. It's a little bit more fun. So that will log out to the console. Frame gives us a stage. The stage is where we put all of our things that we're making. And you can see at the bottom as well, we've got an update of the stage, stage.update. And that allows us to build things and put them on the stage. Uh, and then when we want that to be seen, we update it. And that saves battery power and stuff. So this is ready and made for mobile in that way. We get the stage, we've got a width, we're setting a couple colors, and here we are in the code. We'll make a new circle. And we can also make this a bit bigger for you as well, so you can see that a bit easier. A new circle. Uh, we'll give it a radius of 100 and a color of frame dot pink, for instance. Like that and we'll dot center that on the stage and we'll dot drag it. So there's a couple of ways we can put things on the stage. One way is to center it and that's kind of nice. And when we chain like that, that's called chaining. When we chain like that, we'll often drop it onto the next line like so. So for chaining to work, uh, drag needs to be put on the object. The object is our circle. So if drag needs to be put on the object, then that means center needs to return the object. So center is already put on the object, as you can see. But for, to chain our methods all the way along, the methods return another. And Zim is almost fully chainable. So that's how we do it. We save that, and we do it in the browser. Right click, open in browser. And there we have a pink circle on the stage that we can drag around. There's other ways to add to the stage as well. You could just say add to, and uh, that will add it to the stage. So let's see that. Refresh there, and that adds it at zero, zero. So that's zero, zero up there in the corner, it just adds it. If you want to position it in certain places, you can close, and then tell it, say, 200, comma, 200, and uh, on the stage. Spell it, you can do it. So we save that, and now it will position it at position 200, 200, like so. And you might be wondering, well, how do we know that's 200, 200? If we want, we can uh, add a grid, so a new 
grid, like so. And uh, we save that up. Semicolon there. Save that up and take a look. And that gives us a grid that we can sort of see what's going on. That's percentage, but if we hit the P key and sort of roll right to the center of that circle, you can see that's 200, 200. Um, but I just want to center right now, so we'll go back to centering. Center. There's also a way to position with what's called place, so you can run the place on this, you can drag it to a certain place, and the console will tell you where you put it. So uh, that's a nice easy way as well. But I just want it centered, and let's take a look at a rectangle as well. that okay or do you want it bigger still you sure it's okay all right so instead of a circle this time we will make a rectangle a rectangle and uh, we will make that say 200 by 200 we'll make it frame dash blue oh these are just colors that were stored on the frame uh, there's any colors they turn out you know, keeping consistent. You can put any HTML color there that you want, or, you know, uh, hex numbers, etc. So there's a blue one. Now, if they're all centered on the stage, they'll end up in the same place. So we can use the move, or MOV method. This is a chainable method to do relative movement. And we'll move them 200, which you're probably saying that's the same place again, but we'll just change that to a minus. So we move the circle over to minus 200 and move the rectangle over to 200. And let's see what we've got now. Did I make an error? Uh, dot. I forgot the dots. The little dots. Good. Thank you. Two dots. So we save that up. I'm glad you're awake. I was testing it. OK, let's get rid of this grid, too. So we'll just uh, comment out that grid. And I think we saw them there. We'll come back. So now we've got a rectangle and a circle, great, on the stage. Just a bit more about these shapes. They have these things called registration points, and that's where they get placed. So what we'll do is we'll, after we move them, we will dot root line them. Uh, oops, you can see, we will outline them, like so. And that will give us, during offering, it gives us uh, tips as to what's going on here. So we can see there, let's just make that bigger for you. We can see the round circle is the registration point. This is the bounding box here. And the registration point for the circles in the center, where the bounding or the registration point is at the top left for a rectangle. And indeed for um, any pictures that we bring in and most rectangular things like that. So that's where things get positioned. It's also where things will rotate about and where things will scale about. So we can show you that by going uh, dot rot for rotation, and we'll rotate 45 degrees. So we save that up, and we come back here, and you can see that it's rotated around that registration point. So if we're rotating, if we're animating a rectangle, it's sort of important to know where the registration point is, so it doesn't look like a pinwheel when you didn't want that. It also scales from that, so let's just quickly check scale. Again, we're using our uh, short little chainable methods here. SCA is one for scale. It's kind of neat. I always like using SCA for command. And uh, we won't scale at 45. That would be much too big. So we'll just scale it twice a day here. We come back. And there you can see that scale as well uh, scales from the registration point. So it might be good if we know how to set a registration point. We can use reg. Or we can just say center reg. So now the rectangle will have its registration point centered and added to the stage in the center of the stage. So we save that up and refresh here. And you can see that the scale is coming out from the uh, center there. Uh, sorry, I had to leave you guys. <laughs> okay, so um, let's go back, take a look. Uh, how about we will take off the, the scale and the outline of these guys, we'll keep the triangle, just keep those. And we'll bring in a blob 
Shall we do a blob? So a blob is another shape. It be a new blob. It's kind of fun. And we will dot center that on the stage. If we're going to center that, let's see, we might want to move this over just a little bit uh, to give room for that blob. Probably good. And let's check out what a blob does. So there it is. It gets these bezier points that are like that. And you can move them and make shapes and stuff. Now the bezier points, if you double click on them, they change the type. So, oops. Uh, they change the type. On mobile, those are bigger too, so you can grab them. But these work independently. You see that? And if I double click again, they disappear. So I'll double click twice. And that gives us uh, points like this, which allows us to also make polygons and things. If we double click this again, then it goes to an equal Bezier point where both of them work like that. And one more time, double click, and you get an individual Bezier point like so. We can animate these Bezier points. We can animate them and uh, do things like blob light shows and stuff. So I've been successful with light shows animating the points. We can also record the points, and then you can um, take what you've recorded, it shows it in the, in the uh, console. You can take what you've recorded and pass them in as a parameter. So you can pre-make uh, SA points, and you can hide the controls if you want. So uh, it's pretty handy. Let's um, go in and take a look at um, something else here. It's called transform. So right now, we don't need to drag. No. You don't need to, yeah, okay. So here we'll transform, both instead of drag, transform. There's also gesture. Gesture allows you to pinch and zoom and rotate, you know, like your gestures for mobile. So if you just say dot gesture, you get all that on your objects that you're making. Here's what transform does. We save that up and refresh here. It gives us, do we still have the outlines going on those? To that. And was there another outline hanging around? No. Okay, so just on the circle. So now we're transforming. We'll come in and take a look. It gives us transformation tools which allow us to scale things and uh, resize uh, like so. Get them on this one, etc. So um, the transforms are, are cool because it allows people to make things from these shapes. For the blob, we don't really need it because it gets its own density points. And then there's this thing called the transform manager. So underneath here, we'll make a transform manager. New transform manager. And we need to pass to that each of the objects that we're uh, wanting to manage. So we need references to our circle is equal to. One nice thing about chaining is you don't have to make these bars often, but uh, this, this time we now need to reference it for later, so we need references. Call that one rect is equal to, and how about this one will be blob is equal to, oh, with a bar. There we go. Now we can add these things uh, into the transform manager in an array. So that was circle, circle, comma, rect. And what was the other one? Blah, blah. There we go. The transform manager will let us do one transformation at a time, so it organizes that. And it also has this thing called persist. So we'll dot persist onto that. Persist. And we pass in an ID. How about dev to Nice. Okay, so any guesses as to what this will do? So we save it here. And now, let's see, we'll make this a little bit bigger, like that, we'll make some art. So here's uh, the user making some art, ooh, some green banana art. And there's you guys looking at that art. And now we refresh, or we even close down the browser, and open in browser, so open in browser. And there it is saved, so it remembers what, what they built uh, in a fairly simple way. Okay, let's uh, get rid of this transform stuff and our rect, and we'll go back to the circle that was centered. Let's change that back to a drag, and we won't bother moving it. Now we only have one thing. Instead, we will animate the circle. 
The first parameter of anime is the is the properties that you want to animate stored in an object. So we make an object literal like that, and we say, oh, I want to animate the scale to, say, twice as big. The second parameter of animate is the time, so how about in a second? And now we're chaining on animate to that, and we refresh here. And there, that might be nice to kind of rewind that, yeah. So let's, let's rewind that. Uh, to rewind, unfortunately, rewind is about the tenth parameter, and we'd have to go comma null, comma null, comma null, you know, past the easing type and past the uh, the wait and, and callback functions and stuff. So um, in Zim Duo, that's Zim Two. We're in Zim Six now, and in Zim Six really. Back in Zim Duo, we introduced the Zim Duo technique, and that allows us to pass in parameters individually in order, like this, or to pass in a single configuration object with the uh, property names matching the parameter names. So we should turn to that right now. Let's uh, turn this into a single configuration object, which is just an object that are We'll drop these down onto the next line here, and this one's called OBJ. Uh, the next parameter, if you look in the docs, is called time. And then we wanted to add, what was it, rewind. So comma, rewind, colon, true. So now the order doesn't matter. We can go directly to any parameter that we want. And we save that up. And we refresh here. It gets bigger and it gets smaller. That's good. And how about looping? So any guesses? <laughs> colon, true. Let's see if that works. And we refresh here. Hmm. That's good. Okay, so we can also animate more than one, one property. For instance, we could animate its X position as well to something like 800. And we could do relative animation by putting quote 100 and then it would move 200 from where it is. I've been doing animation for a long time back in the green sock day, you know, etc. Uh, this animation system is really nice. It's very powerful. It's got everything you need. It's way easier to read than, say, CSS animations, for instance. So we will go to 800, and we save that, and we refresh here, and now it animates over to 800. But we're still dragging this. And watch what happens when we drag it. It stops animating. And that's on purpose. If we didn't do that, it would try and drag as well as keep on animating to that other position, and it looks jiggly, jiggly, jiggly. So um, to help out people who are beginning, we automatically stopped. But if you don't want to stop, you can just say um, uh, remove tweens colon false, like that. And then it will not remove the tweens. However, I'm going to get rid of the x because um, that would look bad. So here we have it scaling up and down forever, and our drag will still let it scale up and down. So as you drag it down, you can see that that's still operating. All right, let's comment out the animation and the center and the drag. Everybody okay? Any sure? Hey, uh, there's no way to dim the lights out in the front here. I mean, I don't care too much as long as you can see all right. Uh, okay, so we'll continue on. So we're commenting out know, uh, that stuff. So we've all, all we've got is a circle. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a tile. So bar tile, well, we don't have to bar it, but we might need it later. Bar tile is equal to a new tile. Say tile. Like that. And we'll pass the circle in as the object that we're going to tile. Uh, let's make it so we can put some more of them. We'll make that a bit smaller. Uh, the circle has a third parameter there of dot gray. This is the outline of it. So we'll make an outline of gray. And we will um, we'll also, uh, the next one would be how big that is, how big the outline is, and how, uh, if it's dashed or not. So it's gray. We come on into the tile, and we go comma uh, eight of them, say, and five of them, like that. And we would add that tile to the stage, so we've got centered on the stage. So 
and refresh here and see what we've got. There's a bunch of circles. Now, uh, what we'll do is we'll take that animation from here, copy the animation down onto the tile. And that will animate the tile. It'll look a little bit ugly because it's been animated off from the, the top left corner there, but you know how to fix that, right? We just center reg, like so. And if we center reg, it will do the animation from the middle. Uh, but that's not really what I want to do. I don't want to animate the whole tile. I want to animate each thing inside the tile in a sequence, uh, say with 100 milliseconds in between. So we go sequence, colon 100, and let's see what happens now. Uh, we refresh, and there she goes in the sequence. Okay, a little bit more about the conveniences of a, the tile itself is a, a container, it extends a container. We can do lots of things with the container. If we put an event on the container, for instance, uh, tile.on, click, we can capture an event function. So it will do this function when we click, and in there we'll capture the event object. That's E.target, for instance, it's information about the, the click. E.target, for instance, I can do it. Target uh, dot alpha is equal to 0 0.2 or something. And we would have to update the stage after this. So here's a stage dot update, like so. Um, that will mean whatever was clicked on, the specific thing in the container that was clicked on, it'll have its alpha set. So uh, we might want to show that we can click on something there by adding a dot cur, which uh, brings in a cursor. Uh, any CSS cursor can go in those brackets. By default, it will be a pointer. Uh, that's great. So if we save that up, uh, you'll see that we have a cursor there uh, as well. OK, so that's convenient. There's another thing called current target. So e dot current target, current. This is much like JavaScript. Current target, with capital T, would um, operate on the whole thing. So rather the thing than the thing you click on, it's the whole container now that it's operating on. What do you think would happen if we just drag this thing? So for instance, if we go up here and say tile.drag. Oops. Let's see. So we uh, refresh here, and oh, it picks up. One of the tiles, oh, there's our click, I think we could have turned that one off, huh? So it picks up what was clicked on, and that's handy. We can make a container of 100 monsters or 1,000 monsters and just drag them around by just saying, hey, drag on that container. Now note that they go on top of one another when we pick them up. So if we want, we could say drag colon on top, colon false, and they won't. Uh, there's a whole bunch of parameters with drag as well, and you can also make it drag the current target if you so desire. Now it's not dragging on top. Um, there's a thing called zim loop, so let's loop through the container, and that looks like tile.loop. And in there we get a function, and inside the round brackets of the function we get the object in the container, like we get every object in the container, so the children of the container. We'll call that circle because that's what they are. And we also get the i, so the iterator like that. And then here's our function. And we can do things in here. We can say circle dot uh, radius, for instance, is equal to rand, mm, how about five to maybe 10 to 50 little brackets there, 10 to 50. Now this is one of the conveniences of Zim. There's a bunch of functions that are available, uh, such as random that we use over and over again, and now we get random radius, uh, as you can see there. We can make an array, for instance, so bar circles is equal to frame.pink, frame.green, frame.green, uh, what other blue comes up? 
Okay, and so there's an array, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use the i to get the element of the array. So in here, we're just saying um, a circle dot color is equal to the array, which is colors, at i, but when we're looping through that, we have to use the modulus, so colors dot length. And if you don't know what that is doing, then don't worry too much about it. But now what we're doing is getting a bunch of random colors, or no, we're getting colors in order. And there they are. Oh, a little break. Hey, did you see what it was? What? What's the array name? Oh, I? No, I? Oh, it's, uh, colors is, oh, it's circle. Okay, colors. Right, okay, that should work out all right, I think. And we refresh there, and there's a bunch of random colors. Well spotted, you guys, A plus. Now, if we wanted random colors, we can use another thing called shuffle, shuffle. And in here, we'll shuffle our colors, and we'll grab the first one. So these are these conveniences we were talking about. So now it's got random colors going on. And you may look at the conveniences and say, hey, wait a minute, what if we already have a rand out there in the world or a shuffle out there in the world? Well, Zim has namespaces, so we can say Zim dot. And on anything that is Zim, we say Zim dot like that. And here's where we made a tile, so we would say new Zim dot tile, etc. Now those still get made as global functions. But if we come up to the very top here, there's the Zim namespace. It's now set to false, which means we don't need them. But if we say true there, that's all you have to do. And we don't make global functions or classes. It all uses the Zim namespace. So uh, that's a, a taste of Zim. Now, all it's done is really shown you the, the care that we put into some of the basics of what we're doing. And these have been built on things like CreateJS, which are wonderful people doing a lot for uh, the interactive media world for free, only for your applause and uh, likes and stuff like that. Same with me and all the people that are using Zim. Uh, what I'd like to do is show you just a two minute video that takes you through some of the components and controls of Zim. Things like uh, components or buttons, dials, sliders, color pickers, that kind of stuff. The controls are things like the layout class that gives us responsive design on the canvas, accessibility, which gives us full accessibility on all of our components on the canvas. Uh, uh, things like particle emitters, sound wave, uh, so all these fun things, parallax, etc. So take a look at the, at, the, at the video. And what I'd like to do afterwards, if we could just sort of honor with a nice big uh, round of applause after the video, all the people that have been working on this. That would be wonderful. Hello, and welcome to the Zim JavaScript Canvas Framework. We're going to show you some examples of Zim, and Zim can be found at zimjs.com. And I am Dr. Abstract. Let's go to the site now, zimjs.com, and press examples. And we'll take a look at the fourth one there, a space guy. Cool, there he is. And note that he walks around. So this is called a sprite. And we can shoot. And then we can add some text, ah, uh, like that. <laughs> yes, that looks good. And make that dials to break into a vault. Oh yeah, all that kind of stuff. There's soup working with physics. All those guys. Uh, that one's it. Now I'm triangles uh, that are based on the colors of Zim, and you can hit play. And this one has two spikes on the bottom, and that's the only one with two spikes on the bottom. You know, show you how far away something is, so you can place the guide. How wide is this content? And the context is what's up above the nose, so we can swipe that. Whoosh. Have all the Zim circles? No, we don't. Now we have all nice and blue now. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. Oh, Zim dot move. Have this thing called an. I really love you. Then that's what my heartbeat's gonna be like. Same speed. Oh, no. And we're spitting out all these particles and then they're curving in on. Ooh, 
isn't that pretty sort of atomic like lines uh, with code and uh, as as we mentioned when we get back to the ornament <laughs> and what you can do is adjust the sliders that we're making we make a move with a blob in behind uh, my prime one way at the end got it. And now I have to pick these things up and go twang, cladunk, like that, like so. And we can also start making whoom. And so we're scrolling and you can animate. So there's animation based on the scroll right there. There's also a checkbox here that opened up some radio buttons. And we can drag that and hit. We're testing that you wrap them. Plidink, plidink, and then we can deliver. It's guiding you to places. So if we if we're over here and we want to, so oh, it's even. There we go. Uh, do you recognize this? Do you remember these? And this could be any maze. This could be your maze, or we could let the user <laughs> just open them all up. So you're welcome to look through some of the examples that we were showing the others and have fun with this little mini site here at uh, the Zim examples. Ooh, doo, doo, doo. Zim examples and at zimjs.com. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>